All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of Designing a Robot. Um, in this episode, we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping stuff. So we're going to add some bumpers to our robot, um, some placeholder bumpers, um, probably not full detail ones. Um, and then we're going to also do set up some of the like geometry stuff that I like to do to make sure that you can see everything that you need to see with a robot. So it should be a quick episode, um, but hopefully it's still useful. Um, all right, so first we're gonna add kind of the profile sketch stuff for the bumpers. Um, this is essentially following the same philosophy as some of our other things. Um, so what's that gonna look like? What that's gonna look like is something over here. Bumpers are approximately 3.25 inches so that's two and a half inches of pool noodle and then three quarters of an inch of um plywood or other strong board backing and they're approximately five inches tall um this is notably probably not exactly the dimensions of real bumpers um but it's going to be good enough for our purposes uh, we're going to give it a 1.25 inch curve um Again, probably not exactly, but f good enough for us. Um, all right, then we're just going to mirror that. And the reason that we do that put them in here is because we're going to end up using those down the line in some of our other sketches. So robots, uh, so bumpers. Um, and then one of the other things that I'll do here is that, so typically what we do with our bumpers is that we have kind of, well, not typically, um, but what we're trying this here with our bumpers is going to be having a little bar up here. So I'm going to add that to this just for our, uh, happiness. So, um, that should also be mirrored. All right, so that's about, that's pretty good. Uh, that's gonna be side, side view of those. Um, also going to add a plane here that will be the bumper mounting lane. This guy, so what we're basically gonna end up with here is two things that mirror those, and then Another one of these, and I don't necessarily like these to go all the way, so this is just going to be like a 10 inch piece. Um, so we're going to mirror that, and then we're just going to mirror this guy. So now we've got that, um, we'll go and we'll make our bumpers. So we can make fancier bumpers. Um, that's definitely possible, but my experience for, for the actual design of the robot, you typically don't really need things to be that wild. Um, like, in fact, I wouldn't recommend, like, you can really easily just kind of make yourself unhappy working, to, doing a bunch of work to make, uh, fancy bumpers when you really just need something in the placeholder that, um, the intake can, you can see in your intake. So we're going to go back and use our favorite tool, the extrude individual tool. And in this case, everything is... Well, no, we're going to mirror. We are going to mirror. 
Um, so that's blind right now, but we want it to be symmetric. And you can see that that lines it up. Uh, we got those, and then this is going to be another tube converter. And these will be able to be pretty low key. Um, and since these are bumper mounts and they're like literally not intended to use anything else, uh, we can change them to like a one inch hole spacing. Um, which those of you who are observant may notice um, means that uh, you could do these with um, what's it called again? Should be moving them. At least I thought it was. Um, Oh wait no, zero pattern offset start. So we'll just play with it a little bit, and that'll kind of that kind of brings some of this stuff closer to the edges. Um, where was I at? Those of you who are paying attention will notice that that also means that this can pretty easily be used with like Versa Frame instead of just instead of a custom tube, um, which is what we would probably actually do. Um, and the other bit here is there's going to need to be some clearance holes that we drill on this for uh, to screw into the bumper backing. So that's going to look something like this. We're just going to linear pattern that something like that. And then we'll mirror it. Probably wouldn't actually use that much, but um, good to just have plenty of holes. We've done that. So what we'll actually probably do is um. The inside face of that. Oof. There we go. And then I'll actually get rid of this one, and that'll just be a mirror instead. Oh no. Oh. Just broke references. So we'll fix those. And then, oh wait, actually. Just like that. So that's kind of the perils of some of these things is that they can break. And that's all right. Part of CAD is your stuff breaking all the time. All right. So now we've got those guys. And then we'll just take this and um, do a part, do a bunch of mirroring. Uh, right. So, kind of from there, we're going to need to make our bumpers. And I'm going to try doing it this way. It may not be a fan of that, but no, it's fine. So, we're just using a sweep here. 
Um, you kind of end up with this corner here, but that's easy to clean up. And then we're also not going to meet quite in the middle. So we'll have to do a little bit of um, move face to make that happen. And that'll just be move up to this face. And uh, we'll do that on. Just like that. And then we'll clean up our corners. Move that mirror later. And then just add this guy to it because I'm lazy. All right. So we've got our bumper segments, um, bumper. Bumper. And then we'll um, create a simple bumpers assembly. And these guys just all get grouped. And then if you remember what we did before, we're gonna say, um, we're gonna add ourselves a little make connector to make this easy to constrain the top level. So we get that. Um, the other thing that we're going to do here is that we're just going to override this weight and say that these bumpers are going to be 15 pounds. Uh, we might add some weight later, etc. We just want them to be max weight bumpers. Um, so that's kind of a useful thing to do. So we got those. We're going to insert them. Bumpers, you notice they snap into the right place, but we're still going to constrain them. Um, Because that's just how we roll. Okay, so we don't have the mounting quite whatever sorted out here, um, but that's that's totally all right. We'll just like you can kind of envision it as just going to be some standoffs and uh, probably some shoulder bolts through them. Uh, we'll we'll come back to like actual bumper mounting at a later date. Um, all right. Or we can do it now. Actually, let's just do it now, just because that'll make me happy. Um, okay. So the way that we'd want to do these um, bumper mounts, the way that I, the way that I've started to like doing them, um, is like this. So we have a shoulder bolt that goes through this guy at probably one, two, three, four points per segment. Since these are in a one-shell pattern, they line up with our drivetrain just fine. Um, so we're going to go back to before our mirror. And we're going to add those. Um, since we are a 1032 kind of people, um, that's what we're going to do here. So a 1032 shoulder bolt is a quarter inch diameter approximately. We're going to give it a little bit more space just because um, that uh, is just a good plan with bumpers because bumpers very quickly end up out of alignment as anybody that's built them and dealt with bumpers through a season can tell you. So those are just going to go through everything. Um, and they're going to merge with everybody. Beautiful. All right. So then when we get into our bumper assembly, oh no. Oh yeah, because we can have those back um, just because they'll make it happy. We're also going to throw those nice in a folder because 
folders are nice. Um, all right, so we got these guys. We'll use standard content for these. So that's going to be standard content. Um, and then we want shoulder head screws. Shoulder size, quarter inch. That is correct. And they're just going to be one inch thick. Um, and shoulder screws are a little bit of a pain to constrain because they assume that you want to constrain them to like the bottom of the shoulder. Um, and actually in this case, that might be fine. So what we'll actually do here is we'll say, let's see if it likes that. Oh my. Oh, I didn't fix it here. Well, let's, let's try that again. Okay. All right, it did not like that. So um, we'll do this the old fashioned way. So I'll throw one of the guys up top. You can also use larger and I probably, I don't know. I think we're, we're using 1032 ones. We'll see how we like that through the season. I know some teams that use like quarter, uh, like whatever quarter inch ones, which I think is a five sixteenth inch hole. Um, we'll see if we like that, if we'd prefer that later. Okay. So one of the tricks here is going to be that um, when we add our standoffs, we can't have them attached to this because of how replicate works. Um, but that's all right. So we're just going to do a bunch of face replicates because nothing else on these is the correct size. So we got those. Um, and then we're going to take a quick jaunt over to McMaster Car, our favorite website. Um, and we're going to ask them for Reddit X standoffs in McMaster car. What do you have for me today? We want one inch long ones. All right. And I, I do tend to, I tend to just buy these guys like aluminum ones. Um, some people might swear by steel or something. Um, but that's kind of just what I like. So we'll download those. And then I'll import those. Bring it for you. It's thinking, it's thinking, it's thinking. You notice that it came in here because um, that will make sure that this is correctly specced as, um, actually I should just type in 6061. Correctly specced in appearance. And then I will document one of these guys and those are big beefy standoffs which is what you want when you're going to be throwing bumpers through something okay so we've done that and then we're going to do another replicate Just like that. And then we will also throw basically the washer and bolt that will attach those to the 
thing there. Uh, blue standard content. We like bumpers, whatever, but button heads because these are sticking out the bottom. Um, so I want one of those guys. I want it to be like two and a half inches long, probably. So we'll grab one of those. But we're not going to constrain it yet because we also want some just, we want it to plain washer here too. Washers are always good because, so in this case, we're basically attaching this through a um, 16th inch tube. So by having this, um, we're just going to, we're, we're just going to be having a better time. Um, and here's actually where we're probably going to run into some fun things with the replicate that are, yeah, so that's, that's right now it's two inches from this, but this is a one inch standoff. So what we'll actually do is we'll, we'll flip this over to three inches and then we'll flip it from being on that standoff to being on the tube because then it's not going to be constrained to any kind of standoff there. And then we'll make a tiny little assembly here. Um, the reason that we're making this assembly is because if I try to replicate all of these, actually, no, we're not going to. That's just, that's kind of just silly. So 3.04, like that. Um, so this guy, we're just going to do it to here. Offset is going to be negative, not negative. Cool. Um, and then we can replicate both of those. I missed one. Cool. Um, and then we're just missing kind of a corner gusset here, which needs to have by a half inch roll here, and then can just be half inch roll pattern stuff there. So, bumpers, three mirror. And this is going to be pretty similar to what we did on um, Be the okay, so this is going to be like so. What do we want? Okay, so this is all in one inch roll pattern, which is nice because that means that it'll just all line up all the time. So 
Let's grab all these. And the plan is just going to be to rivet these. Let's see here. And now we're just a little bit them there. The edge, and that does not need to be, should not be like that. Right, so there's our guess it. This does not get the same treatment that we did for our other one. Um, We would like, I think I need, is it, all those are going to get. Let's oh, it'll be like that. Documents. So you'll notice basically the ratio here of um of what are they called again? Uh you notice the ratio of effort here. So my primary focus on the effort is entirely on this mounting. And it's not on making sure that the bumpers are like highly detailed or have bumper staples or something. It's what I want is because the mounting is the part that is like you need to get the mounting right. Um, and I think anybody that's like dealt with bumpers that had bad mounting will tell you that they wish that they had spent more time on it. Uh, I know so many years we felt like we wanted to, we should have spent more time on it. So see that as approximately like my recommended level of thought um, for bumpers versus anything else. Okay, so. We've got some nice detailed bumper CAD mounting things. Uh, you can see that this corner isn't quite right. Um, we'll want to adjust this to be like, have a half inch hole in the side, but, um, and that's fortunately a really quick adjustment. A nice big hole there. And then we kind of end up with just a nice little deal there. Um, and this washer is big, but um, we can play with that a little bit more if we really want to. Uh, in that case, you would want to just like measure whatever washers you actually have. <laughs> okay, so we got this guy. I have one other thing that I wanted to show you, which is that one of the things I typically do with a robot like this is I create the envelope for the robot. Um, and this is a little bit of a trick. It, it, like, it's not really a trick per se. It's just something that I like to spend some time doing. Um, because it's useful for visualizing everything. So um, actually, we don't start there. We start 
in here. So now that we can, since we have some kind of dimensions for this, what we can do is we can start kind of creating our perimeters. So um, to fit underneath a low bar, you need to be about 40, less than 46 inches tall. So we'll make one of these that's 46 inches. And then we'll create another one that represents the absolute maximum starting, which is 52 inches. And then we also have a maximum extension um, at the end of like when you're climbing, which is 66 inches. Right. So, and those are, those are kind of like height limits. And then we also have an important one that is our extension limits. Sixteen. All right, and then we'll use those to create our envelope. But you'll notice that things are starting to slow down a little bit. Um, one of the things that we'll do eventually is, um, what's the term? Uh, one of the things that we'll do eventually is we'll, we'll split everything out into separate documents. Um, but that is not necessarily what we want to do right now while we're still like working on some of this. Also, frankly, I'm a little bit lazy and since I'm the only person doing this, um, like I don't need, I don't, I don't, it's, it's not as big of a deal for me as it is for like a team. Um, so second in position up to vertex like that. So so that's going to be our starting configuration. And then the rest of these are basically going to be new guys to vertex. Ah. Right. And then right. And then what I kind of like to do for this bottom for this the extension limit one because it ends up being a little bit more complicated is ah. We'll do like this, and then it also get its. Uh, well, I won't do that. It won't get that yet. Sixteen, and then we'll use this because it doesn't need to interfere. Um, and then this guy gets 16 inch fillets because it's a 16 inch extension from your frame perimeter, not a 16 inch box around your robot. Okay, so now we'll name these. So starting config, max starting config. line extension 
extension limits. And all this stuff weighs nothing, but in order for this to be useful, we're going to just play with it a little bit to make sure it's all uh, transparent. You can change the colors of these if you want to. I don't find it really matters. So, um, and then we also want a mate connector. I don't want to do that. And this will be owned by this part. And then we'll make that an assembly. It's useful for it to be an assembly and not like a configurable part or something or a composite part because then you can like hide parts of it, which is nice. That all gets grouped. And then we'll fix it. And then it goes. And something's broken, but uh, I will handle that once I'm done. Oh, wrong insert. Now we got three things, and that's kind of this is kind of the core base set of stuff that we'll use to make the rest of the robot. Um, hope that was useful. Went a little bit long this time, um, but uh, hope it was good information for you. Good luck and see you next time.